Look at this, man. Look at this. This is what it's about right here, dude. Paddleboard? Yes, please. I like it. Hello from the lake and welcome back to the third and final episode of this mini series I've been working on, fishing from a paddleboard, my friends. Today, I am going to share with you my true initial thoughts on fishing from a paddleboard. Is it good for you? Should you do it? Would you like it? These are the things I'm gonna talk about. All in all, obviously I've had a blast fishing out of this rig, but there's certainly some pros and cons to be aware of. So I'm gonna share those while I fish. I have one ultralight with me today and I'm just gonna fish for whatever bites. So without further ado, let's get started fishing and let's start sharing our thoughts. This is probably one of my favorite parts about fishing out of a paddleboard. You can just kind of dip your toesies in the water. It feels really good. Today I'm gonna to get started with this ultralight right here, two pound test, uh, one 32nd ounce mule jig with a donkey tail junior on there. I actually went ahead and rigged up my kayak crate on the back of this thing. I just kind of used some bungees as well as the straps in the back and uh, it's pretty sweet and it gives us uh, another camera view. You know, I, I was doing a camera view off the front but I felt like, you know, I kept just showing my crotch so I feel like it's probably better to do it over the shoulder so we're making improvements. Slowly but surely we're making improvements. Also, I knew I was going to forget something. I forgot my rod holder so we do not have a rod holder today. That's okay. I've only got one stick, so I'm not that worried about it. One of my favorite things about this glide paddleboard is this. It is so comfortable. This like foam deck is awesome. Really big fan. These are like mounting brackets. I haven't done anything with these yet, but in the future I might consider adding some kind of mount. I don't really know how to use them yet. I need to do some research and kind of look into it, but it's nice that they're there. The paddle has been solid too. Pretty big fan of the paddle. It's not too heavy. Um, for three pieces and it's got foam on the inside, I would have thought it would be a little heavier. Not too bad. Um, it's been very comfortable. They've got four hooks on here, which is nice because if you use a bungee, you can obviously strap additional gear down. The other thing I wanted to point out is I actually car topped this today. I didn't feel like I wanted to deflate it. I wanted to test it out and car top it and it did just fine. So the fact that you can car top it or deflate it and just haul it in a car, that's nice. Man, it is still out here today. Perfect day for paddle boarding. That is one thing I definitely will talk about is, you know, wind. Wind is obviously not gonna be your best friend on a paddle board, but it's not too bad. It's very similar to kayak fishing, I would say. Obviously my main kayak is an Old Town Sportsman PDL 120, so it's got pedal drive. So that obviously gives me a lot more abilities with the wind, but your traditional sit on top kayak, I would say pretty similar to the paddle board as far as how much it's gonna get affected by the wind. Oh, I just got a short strike by a little gill. I didn't wanna come to this lake. This lake is super overpopulated with dinky gills, but I came here because the other lake I was going to go to, I could not get on the water. So I came here as a by backup plan. And unfortunately, there's just gonna be a lot of dinky gills here. So hopefully we can find some bass. Daggummit. They're just not gonna get their mouth around the hook. They're all like three inches, I'm telling you. Got him. I saw this fish come up and chase it. Just a little dinky bass, but we're on the board. All right, buddy. I literally saw, I had my jig right in front of me and it just disappeared. So I set the hook. Dinky little bass. There he is. Same thing. I got it up next to my paddle board and then I just saw my white jig disappear. So I set the hook. <laughs> it's hilarious. Two in a row, same exact way. They're growing. See you, buddy. Sweet. Two fish in a matter of like a minute. I'm getting short strikes. That's a little tiny gill. He's coming back, yeah. These dang gills are just gonna be such pests today. Like I just saw him, he was taking it all over the place there. Did I get him? Oh my gosh, look, this is what I'm talking about. Just a ridiculous amount of this right here. I unfortunately hooked this one in the eyeball. This place has no shortage of fish. Look at that. These fish are messing with me. And uh, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to deal with them all day. That's why I don't really come here very much anymore because just too overpopulated with tiny gills. One of the key topics that I really wanted to discuss with regards to my initial thoughts on paddle boards is rigging. The fact that you have this big open deck and all these straps and whatnot gives you a tremendous amount of opportunities to kind of make it your own, which I really like. Personally though, I believe that it's most fun when you keep it really minimalist and really simple. The reason is, is because what's wonderful about these boards is they're lightweight, they're spacious, they're comfortable, and they're just fun recreationally to paddle. So for me personally, I am going to use this more so from a minimalist standpoint. I'm gonna bring one rod, a little bit of tackle. I'm never gonna be the kind of guy that rigs this thing up and brings three to five rods and a whole pile of gear. Got him. 
Oh my gosh. Dink. Oh. He's got it. Sweet. Pulled it away from him, and then he came back and ate it. That right there is my best bluegill of the day, and that's really saying something. One of the other things I really like about this thing is just the ability to fish from numerous positions. You can stand in it, you can sit, you can put your feet in the water, you can keep relatively dry if you don't want to get in the water. The fact that it's just this big open deck with this nice comfortable foam on it, I like the fact that I can just fish so many different ways. And you know, for someone like me, that's obviously, I've got some really long legs. It's nice to be able to switch positions from time to time because I just get super uncomfortable if I'm in the same position for way too long. So the ability to kind of switch it up a little bit is really nice. I'm sure one of the things a lot of you are probably curious about is really the stability. And you know, I'm six foot six and I have absolutely no issues standing and paddling this thing. I do think obviously you're gonna need a little bit of stability. You're gonna need some coordination, but all in all, if I can do it, I feel like a lot of people can do it. One thing I did wanna bring up is in the last two videos, I did not wear a life jacket and I just wanted to apologize for that. I really need to make sure that I'm wearing a life jacket in all my videos because it does set a good example. And also you never really know what's gonna happen on the water. Um, I felt extremely safe, like 100% safe on those bodies of water because there's no large watercraft and it's, you're never very far from a house and it's just really shallow bodies of water. So I wasn't concerned at all, but there's really no excuses. I should have at least had a PFD with me. That's better. That's what I, no! I never got a good hook set in him. I just kind of pulled up on him. Shoot, that was probably a little 14, 15 inch largemouth, and that's exactly what I'm kind of hoping to catch. <sighs> this has got to be some kind of sick joke. One thirty-second ounce fire red mule jig with a mule minnow 3.2 in the cowpoke color. I figure using this little bit larger profile will avoid those stinking bluegill and we'll focus in on some bass maybe. Oh my gosh, that bass just came out of nowhere, smashed this thing. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. All right, it's a skinny little guy. There we go. Oh, daggummit, Ethan, just grab the fish. Don't grab the line. You know, I might start bringing a net with me. Between last trip and this trip, I've lost a few fish and they've all been on me. If I just had a net with me, I'm pretty darn sure I would have landed a lot more fish. Slow fishing so far, but I'm starting to feel a little bit better. We've missed a couple bass here recently, so I trust that we're gonna be able to start finding some more bass. Switching up to that Mule Minnow 3.2 is gonna give me just a little bit larger profile. Super slow rate of fall, super tantalizing motion. I trust that the bass are not gonna be able to resist. I just gotta put it in front of them. So that last bass that I just missed because I grabbed the line, definitely ate it because I dropped it right on his head and he just kind of reaction bit it I feel like so I think the big thing is just making sure I'm making precise casts and putting it in little shady spots and if I can do that eventually I'm gonna plop it on top of one's head and they're gonna slurp it right up and this thing has a super slow rate of fall so I have to be patient cast it out there let it sink nice and slow twitch it a few times so on and so forth speak of the devil there's one right there came out from under that dock there you go he came up and ate it after I twitched it once or twice. All right, I'm not losing this fish. There you go. Small one, of course, but we didn't lose him, so that's good. Well, we weren't gonna lose that fish. He choked that thing. All right, dinky bass, but golly, ended my dry streak. Yeah, that's water. Oh shoot, oh dude, a giant freaking bass is sitting there that almost looks like it's on a bed. Now it's obviously not on a bed, but my Lord. It was a giant, I spooked him. I don't know what he was doing. There's like this big clump of like dirt and he was just sitting right on top of it. And he held his position for quite a while before I eventually spooked him. Huh, it's weird, I've never seen that before. I'm just gonna go down the bank and hang out for a little while. 
I've got this mentally noted. I'll come back and cast at it here in a minute, but I want to let him have a chance to reset. All right, I've lost my patience. I got to go check, see if that fish went back to his throne. Just slowly cruise up there. No need to rush. Oh, there's one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Was that that fish? That might've been that same bass. Daggummit, he was sitting here now. Oh, there he is. He's still around. I just caught the small one. Daggummit. These fish are literally acting like spawning bass. So weird. We're like in the tail end of summer right now. There's no way they're spawning. It's like this is the male and that was the female. I'm telling you guys, this is so weird. Dinky little bass. There's a big one over there somewhere. I don't know, I might have spooked her when I uh, caught this little guy, but we're gonna try to fish a little bit more. There's another dink. Let's see if I can catch this little dink real quick. Oh no, spooked that fish. I should have cast a little further. Oh well, it! I don't know what that big fish is doing, but I really, really want to catch that fish. This is weird. Oh, there's a big one, there's a big one. There's a big one. That's not the same big one. That's a decent one though. It's coming towards my deal. Gonna eat it? He's got it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah, sight fishing him. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is freaking awesome. What just happened? This is a nice one for ultralight especially. Holy smokes. Big fish. There was one even bigger than this I saw, but this is a real solid bass. Are you kidding me right now? Look at this, man. Look at this. This is what it's about right here, dude. Paddleboard? Yes, please. I like it. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Oh, this is where I should have brought a net. This fish is a little bit harder to uh, get. Holy smokes. Say ah. Can I get a boom shakalaka? Anybody want to give me one of those? Holy smokes. The Mule Minnow 3.2 gets the job done. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Talk about an ultralight bass, huh? 17 and a half inches probably. Beauty. Let's turn her loose. There was another one even bigger than that. Might have been a 20 incher now that I caught that fish. Holy smokes. I don't know what these fish are doing, but they're just cruising around on this bank. And I'll take it. I will certainly take it. You know, the one thing that I haven't really talked about yet that is the most obvious advantage of this rig right here is portability. The fact that this takes up very little space and you can transport it with just about any rig, you could technically wear the duffel bag as a backpack and ride a bike with this thing if you really wanted to. I don't think I would recommend that, but you could. The point is, is that it is extremely portable and there's no other rig quite like that. So I think that's just such a huge advantage. So for those of you that don't have very much space or you don't have the hauling capacity, for any other watercraft, I think this is really such a cool rig for you. I think ultimately at the end of the day, it just kind of depends on what your style is. If you enjoy getting on the water, putting your feet in the water, swimming a little bit, I feel like it's such a fun platform. Here comes a dink. Come on, dink. He's got it. <laughs> hey, you know what? Sight fishing is fun no matter what the size. I saw two of these guys chasing this thing, so I knew one was gonna eventually eat it. Dink. These look like old bluegill beds is what these look like. Oh, there's a tiny bass right there. He's just sitting there. No, there he goes. I spooked him. Hey, get back here. Come eat it. Oh my gosh, there's a nice bass. There's a nice bass. I knew there was going to be one up here. Oh, he's cruising away. I think I spooked him. Shoot. Come on, come get it. He might still eat it. You never know. I think he, he hightailed it out of here. Daggummit. I knew there was going to be one up here. I did not, I can't believe I didn't see that fish. All of a sudden he just swam away. They can blend in really well. I'm telling you, these bass you know, on this, on this kind of light brown bottom, you would think you'd see them easier, but sometimes they can really blend in. There's one. That's him. That's the fish I just spooked. He went off to this little deeper section. And he just hung out. I just dead stick my bait down there and boom, nice one. Not as big as that other, but a solid fish. Solid bass, solid bass. Hey there, buddy. Thanks for playing. Now this is fun right here, folks. I think kayak fishing is a lot of fun, but I'm pretty sure this is even more fun. This is awesome. Hello there. 
Say ah. There you go. This fish is kind of ugly. He's got big old head and skinny little body. Man, I skin hooked you. Thank goodness we got you. Man, we pinned you, but we really skin hooked him. All right, I'm kind of digging this little mule minnow setup. It's great for sight fishing. Not a giant, but a wonderful fish for ultralight. He's got a big fat head and a kind of a skinny tail, but he looks healthy otherwise. He's nice and chunky. All right, see you, buddy. Thanks for the fight, buddy. Oh, that one smoked it as soon as it hit the water. Ah, that's a dink. Oh well, I'll take it. I made a long bomb down there. Dinky little bass, I'll take it. Got him. Dink, but that was fun. Well, I just got home from the lake and I'm obviously sitting in my garage right here. And as you can see, we've got the paddleboard and the kayak. And if I haven't made it clear by now, I love that paddleboard. It is a very fun way to catch fish and it's just a very enjoyable watercraft. I really like it both for fishing and then just for recreational use. Now, obviously when it comes to like big fishing trips, I'm still probably gonna focus on the kayak. The kayak for me is extremely great. You know, it's got the pedal drive, it's heavier, it holds its position in the water. There's a lot of things that you just are not gonna be able to do off the paddleboard that you can do in a big kayak like that. But that big kayak is like 80 something pounds and it takes up a ton of space. The fact that you can take that paddleboard, break it down and transport it with any vehicle, that's incredible. It is definitely a very unique piece of equipment, but I love it and I cannot wait to fish with it more in the future. For me personally, I'm probably gonna use it a lot on smaller bodies of water. I'm gonna use it when there's a little bit less wind and then I am definitely going to be trying some river floats with it. So so all in all, I definitely think an inflatable paddleboard is a great option for fishing. I just think you need to decide if it's going to meet your requirements as an angler. But if you don't have the ability to store a kayak or a boat, or if you don't have the ability to transport them, I'm telling you, that inflatable paddleboard, that glide back there, that thing's sick. So anyways, I hope you have a great day. Make sure to stay tuned for more paddleboard fishing in the future. I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot of it. We'll catch you next time.